The first NHL season was nothing short of remarkable. We saw an arena burn down, players get arrested for using their sticks as swords, and a high-flying offense. Many of the events that took place during the league's inaugural season would never even be considered happening in today's league. While much of the craziness took place during the season, even the league was created through controversy. The year is 1917, and the biggest professional hockey league, the National Hockey Association, just disbanded. The league mainly folded because of the shady moves made by Toronto Shamrocks team owner, Eddie Livingstone. Livingstone made some pretty questionable decisions that infuriated the NHA. Before the 1915-1916 season, Livingstone purchased another NHA team, the Toronto Blue Shirts, making him the only owner to own two franchises in the league. Because Livingstone now held more negotiating power than the rest of the league, the league asked him to sell the Shamrocks. He agreed to do so, but several months had passed and no change was made. During this time, Livingstone was moving players from the Shamrocks to the Toronto Blue Shirts, leaving the Shamrocks to rot. He was then stripped of the Shamrocks franchise. Livingstone then went further to piss the league off, causing him to now have to sell the Blue Shirts. Again, Livingstone didn't sell the team, instead he sued the NHA. And by this time, the owners of the Canadians, Wanderers, Senators, and Bulldogs were fed up with Livingstone's childish behavior. But they couldn't just ban him from the league, as the NHA's constitution did not allow them to just expel him from the league. So instead of trying to resolve the conflict, the other four owners simply just suspended the NHA's operations and made an entire new hockey league two weeks later, known as the National Hockey League. So yeah, the NHL was created just because the other team owners couldn't deal with Livingstone, and they would rather start a new league from scratch than have to do business with this man. So just like that, the NHL was created with four teams participating in it. The Montreal Canadiens, the Toronto Arenas, the Ottawa Senators, and the Montreal Wanderers. And fans were super eager for the start of the season. Well, maybe not. Only about 700 fans showed up to the league's first two games on December 19, 1917, which featured a match between the Montreal Wanderers and the Toronto Arenas, and the other match was the Montreal Canadiens against the Ottawa Senators. And these games were not even close to the hockey we know today. At the start of the NHL, players used wood sticks which weighed about 5 pounds, compared to the sticks today where they weigh about 13 ounces. They also didn't wear helmets, which led to some pretty gruesome injuries. Also at the start of the NHL, a huge rule was implemented for goalies. Goalies could now drop to their knees to save the puck, which wasn't allowed in the NHA. In the NHA, if a goaltender were to drop to his knees before this rule was assessed, a penalty would occur. There were some concerns that this rule might have slowed scoring down a little, but that was no worry, as there were about five goals going in the net for each team every game. I guess that's just what happens when your goalies look like this. So, with new rules, the NHL continued on with these four teams battling night in and night out. Well, that's how it was for about six games. The Montreal Wanderers actually had to leave the league as the arena they played in, the Montreal Arena, burned to the ground. The fire started in the ice-making plant, causing the arena to burn down on January 2nd, 1918. The fire began midday when the only people in the building were the superintendent and his family, who escaped safely. The damage was estimated at $150,000, which is equivalent to a whopping $3.5 million in today's currency. And those damages included the uniforms and sticks of the Wanderers and the Canadians organizations, with only a third of that damage being covered by insurance. The fire led the Montreal Wanderers, who were already not doing well, to disband within days. They figured that since they were already the worst team in the league, they might as well just resign. The Canadians then had to move into the Jubilee Arena for the rest of the season, which actually happened to also burn down that April. How the NHL worked that season was different from what we've ever seen. There were actually two halves of the season, and the winners of each half faced each other in the playoffs. So the winners of the first half of the season were the Montreal Canadiens going 10-4, and, and the winners of the second half of the season were the Toronto Arenas going 5-3. So the Arenas and the Canadiens were getting ready for a fierce seven-game series, winner takes all. Just kidding. The NHL champion was actually decided by a two-game total goal series. So whatever team scored the most goals in a two-game span were crowned the champions, and that ended up being the Toronto Arenas scoring 10 goals to the Canadiens' seven. The arenas were then named the NHL champions, 
and would face the Pacific Coast Hockey Association champion for the Stanley Cup. The Pacific Coast Hockey Association, or better known as the PCHA, was a hockey league based out of the Western United States and Western Canada, and it encompassed six teams. The Vancouver Millionaires, the Victoria Senators, the Seattle Metropolitans, the Portland Rosebuds, the Spokane Canaries, and the new Westminster Royals. The PCHA champion that year ended up being the Vancouver Millionaires after they defeated the regular season champs, the Seattle Metropolitans, in a two-game playoff, the same format as the NHL. In a series held entirely in Toronto, the arenas won the series by three games to two in a best-of-five series to win the Stanley Cup, with Alf Skinner leading the way with 10 points in five games. So, just like that, with only one arena burning to the ground and one team leaving the league simply because they were losing, the first NHL season was in the books. The leading point getter in the league was the Canadiens' own Joe Malone, scoring 44 goals and just 4 assists for 48 points in 20 games, and on the same team, the best goalie in the league would be Vesna going 12-9 with a 3.93 goals against average. A lot has changed in the NHL since 1917, so I'll just rattle off some facts for you. Since its inaugural season, 7,623 players have played in the NHL. Toronto's Harry Cameron was rumored to be the NHL's highest paid player in 1917, earning him $900 per season. Now, Nathan McKinnon is making $12.6 million. Only 700 people showed up to the first NHL game. Now, NHL arenas can hold around 18,000 people except for the Coyotes, who might still be getting 700 people a game. In 1917, the maximum driving speed in most American cities was just 10 miles an hour. Today, some NHL players have been clocked at skating more than 30 miles an hour. And finally, throughout the 100 years of the NHL, the league has grown from four solely Canadian teams to 32 teams across all of North America. The evolution of the NHL from its humble beginnings to the modern day has undoubtedly been a fascinating journey marked by significant transformations and very necessary changes. I mean, imagine a time when players didn't have helmets protecting their heads or even visors protecting their faces from flying pucks and sticks. We see enough face and head injuries nowadays, I can't even imagine what it was like back in the early days of hockey, especially when players were carrying around five pound weapons. In the inaugural season of the NHL, players Alf Skinner and Joe Hall were involved in a stick-swinging duel in Toronto, attempting to bash each other's heads with their sticks while using them like swords. Both players were arrested by Toronto police and the league fined them $15. So it's good that the NHL has made the necessary equipment changes. The NHL we know today is a multi-billion dollar organization with 32 teams, but we must remember that the NHL couldn't have been what it is today without the controversial and incredibly wild first season it had.